everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to write an absolute value function as a piecewise function. Okay, so sometimes it can be kind of a two-step process. If you are looking at a graph and you have to write the vertex form of the absolute value yourself, um, so you would do that first and then you would write the piecewise function from that. We will do that in the second example today. Here in the first example, uh, the first step is kind of already done for us. We already have the equation in vertex form. So all we have to do is take this now and write it as a piecewise function. Okay, so the reason we can do this is because an absolute value is like a V shape, right? So the right side and the left side are kind of like two pieces, like a piecewise function. Okay, so we can do this. So what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by saying f of x equals, and we're gonna write our open set bracket there, and we're gonna write our two pieces here. Okay, so now how we do this, one of the pieces is gonna be basically exactly as we see this part right here, and the other one we're gonna make the inside of the absolute value opposite, okay? So I'm gonna make the, the opposite one first. So I'm gonna say seven, and then I'm gonna do a bracket, and I'm gonna put a negative there, x plus one in parentheses, and then we're gonna write minus five. Okay, so look what we did. We made x plus one opposite, okay? And then our domain restriction, we're gonna say if what's inside the absolute value, x plus one, is less than zero, okay? So the one we make opposite, we use the less than symbol. Now the next one that we're gonna write is just exactly as it's written, but we change the absolute values to parentheses. So seven times x plus one minus five, if, now here we still do x plus one because that's what's inside the absolute value, but now we say greater than or equal to zero, okay? So that's basically it for our piecewise function, but we can simplify that a little bit, okay? So now we're gonna take each portion and we're gonna simplify it. So we'll do this part first, okay? So if I scroll down just a little bit, I'm gonna say seven times, and then in parentheses, opposite of x plus one, close my bracket, minus five. Okay, so I'm gonna distribute this negative sign. So now we have seven times negative x minus one, minus five. Now we distribute our seven, so negative seven x minus seven minus five and we get negative seven x minus 12. Okay, so now we can go back and we can write, basically, uh, let's write it again. So let's say f of x equals, okay, and now we have, instead of this whole long part we have circled in pink, now we can write this portion right here because we simplified it. So negative seven x minus 12. If, and now we can also simplify the domain here, we can just subtract one, right? So now we can say if x is less than negative one. Okay, so we're done with that first part. All right, now the second part, we can simplify that one as well. So we say seven, so now this is the part here, times x plus one in parentheses minus five. So here we just distribute the seven, we get seven x plus seven minus five, and that simplifies to seven x plus two. Okay, so now we can add that to our piecewise function, seven x plus two, if, and we subtract one again, x is greater than or equal to negative one, okay? And that would be it, that would be our piecewise function that we took from our absolute value function, okay? All right, let's do one more where we start from a graph, okay? So now in this case, we have to do two things. The first thing we need to do is write our absolute value function in vertex form. Okay, so to do that, we need to write down the general form. So let's say y equals a times x minus h plus k, right? That's our general vertex form for an absolute value function. h and k is where our vertex is located, right? h comma k is where our vertex is. So we notice right here, our vertex is right there at three comma zero, okay? So now we can rewrite this as y equals a times x minus three, and we'll just leave it as that because k is zero, right? So plus zero just simplifies and we can take it off. All right, so now we need to know what our a value is, okay? So to figure that out, we just need to take one other point on our absolute value line here and plug it in for x and y, okay? So let's use this point right here, okay? That is four comma two. So x is four and y is two. So I'm gonna say two equals a times the absolute value of four minus three. Two equals a times the absolute value of one, which is just one, so we get a is equal to two, okay? So now we can take a equals two and we can plug it in 
right there for A. <coughs> Excuse me. So now our absolute value, our absolute value vertex form is y equals two times the absolute value of x minus three. Okay. So now we didn't have to do that on the first example because that was already given to us. But if we're looking at a graph, we got to find that first. Now we can take our absolute value in vertex form and we can write it as a piecewise function. So we say f of x equals, we open our set, and the first one we're gonna make what's inside opposite. So two times opposite of x minus three in parentheses. And this is going to be if, let me move it over a little bit so we have some room. We'll just move it down here, okay? If what's inside the uh, absolute value, x minus three, is less than zero. Okay, so less than zero because that was the part we made opposite. So now the next one we're gonna say two, and we're just gonna do parentheses times x minus three, if x minus three is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and now we simplify. So we're gonna take our first part here that I'm circling in yellow. So I'm gonna say two bracket negative and then x minus three in parentheses. And we're gonna simplify. So if we distribute the negative, we get two times negative x plus three. Now we can distribute our two and we get negative two x plus six, okay? So I'm just gonna circle that for right now. That's gonna take the place of that part right there. Okay, so I'll switch over. And now let's say f of x equals, and now instead of two times bracket negative x minus three in parentheses, we can just say negative two x plus six. If, and now here we can add three, if x is less than three, okay? All right, so now we go back and let's do the second part. So here we just distribute the two, since we don't have the negative there, so that's just two x minus six. Okay, so we're done with that one. We put it back in the piecewise function, two x minus six. If we add three, x is greater than or equal to three, okay? All right, and that is how you take an absolute value in vertex form and you write it as a piecewise function.